Many developers sooner or later have to do some web scraping. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. What is web scraping and why do we want to do it? Well, let's say we're building some kind of deals website. So we need to know a lot of price and product data. So we need to get the data from this website and other websites as well. And then we can check what the best deals are on a particular day or week. Or maybe this e-commerce website is a competitor of ours and we need to keep track of their prices. We need to monitor their prices. Or maybe we want to know what people are saying about us on social media. Right? We want to do some sentiment analysis. And especially these days with machine learning and AI, you need a lot of data to train your model. Now we could collect all of this data manually ourselves, right? So we could go to a page like this and I could see this is the price for this product and note it down and then for this product. However, this is too time consuming. So we want to automate it. Now, sometimes the website that you want to get data from actually already offers an API, but often that's not the case. Or if they do offer an API, it doesn't contain the specific data that you're looking for. So at that point, you may want to consider building a web scraper yourself. So we can efficiently collect data. And that's what Bright Data helps you out with. So Bright Data is the sponsor of this video and they have a new product called the Scraping Browser API, which helps a lot with the obstacles that you're going to face when you do web scraping. For example, by doing it yourself, you may get blocked, but Bright Data has a proxy network which will help you get unblocked. So in this tutorial, we're going to walk through an example of scraping an e-commerce website. I'll show you the obstacles that you're going to run into and then I'll show you why Bright Data may be the solution that you're looking for. I'm going Going to assume that you have node.js installed in case you want to follow along if you haven't done that yet make sure you install it because we're going to run some javascript and that doesn't work out of the box you need a so-called javascript runtime and the most popular one right now is called node.js so i have already installed this so i can click it away and let me make this a little bit smaller i have opened up my code editor i'm using visual studio code and i have opened a folder the folder currently is empty there are no files in the folder and now let's say we want to scrape this website how would we do that well you would simply create a JavaScript file. I'm going to call that simple scraper dot js and let's say we want to get the product data so here we have all of these products right so there's a title in there there's some description they have a price and at the bottom there's also another page right this is something that you're also commonly going to run into and we'll talk about that but let's start off with one page here and let's try scraping their title the description and the price of each product so i'm going to write a function here it's going to be an async function and we can call that get product data so this function is going to be responsible for getting the product data this is going to be the implementation and at the end of course we want to call the actual function right so i have a complete course on javascript check out the links in the description i'm going to assume you know a little bit here so if you're doing a very simple scraper the only thing you really need is the fetch api so we can use await fetch here and the only thing you need to pass here is the url so we can just copy the url here and paste that right here and we will get a response for that so we can store that in a variable called response and let me add some comments here just to make it extra clear Clear. fetch page from URL. Since we're getting HTML, we want to use response.text. If you're getting JSON data, you want to do response.json, which will convert the response into a normal JavaScript object. Here though, when you're fetching a page like this, you're going to get back HTML. So that's just, that's not JSON, that's just normal text. And let's actually see what we get. So we can just console log that. So I'm going to save here. Then I'm going to open up my terminal here, which is integrated into my Visual Studio Code editor. I can open it up by control tilde sign, or you can use here in the options menu, terminal, new terminal. All right, so then here what I can say is note, and then the name of the file that I want to run, it's called simple scraper.js. So let's see what we get. So here, if I open this up, you can see we now have a bunch of HTML. This is not very useful so far, so we need to process this further. Now to easily process HTML, often you want to use the Cheerio package. So if you installed Node.js, you should have also installed the NPM package manager that comes with it by default and you can say in the terminal npm install and then cheerio if we do that we will install cheerio and it will actually put that in a folder called node modules and it will also create package.json files to keep track of the things that we've installed so i can close the terminal again and now we can use cheerio so we can say we want to import everything as cheerio from the Cheerio package. Then we can load the body data into a dollar sign, that's the convention. So we can say Cheerio.load, put the text that we get from the whole page in there. So let's see, we wanna get the titles, the description, and as well as the prices. We want to see how this page is structured. So you can do right click inspect and you get this inspector tool here. And now I'm gonna click right click inspect on this product card. And actually I did it on the image, but that's close enough. So here we have the main element, then 
the second div holds all the product cards and then it's each individual div in there that we want what we want to do is loop over each product card so what we can do here is we can say dollar sign and then we can have a selector to select all of the product cards so what we can do here is we can say in the main the direct child element of that is this div it's going to be a div so we can say div and there is another div in here so this is going to be the second child so we can say nth child two and then in there we have all of those divs individual divs for the product cards so then all the divs that are in there so let's see that will give us all of those divs so then we can call each so here we want to get the product title description and price so now what we're doing is basically we're looping over each div here right so this div is the whole product card then in that div we have an image we're not going to use that here but there is also this h2 which is the title of the product we also have a description here this paragraph and then another paragraph which holds the actual price so that second paragraph then has a span that holds the actual number right so you need to dig down a little bit in the html when you do web scraping it's part of the game so we want to have the title well that's going to be that element and what you can do with cheerio is you can say that element we can find the h2 in there and then get the text out of there and we can do the same with description this paragraph is the third child element and then we say get the text out of there which is that description and then we want to get the price as well right so the actual number is sitting in a span here so we want to get the text of that span that's the actual price so now we have the data that we want for each particular element let's actually store that in an array we can say product data is just going to be an empty array for now and then we're going to loop over each product card and we're going to store that in the array for each one so push data to the array we can do product data dot push same identifier for name and value so you can actually just leave that off after looping through all of that we can do something with the product data here this array will hold all of the data that we just got and then we can just do something with that in this case in this tutorial let's just log this you may want to store this in a database but i'm gonna save here i'm gonna open up my terminal again i can hold my up arrow key to go through a previous command here i want to run this file now we get an issue let's see i'm using an import statement this is an es modules as it's called node.js was built on a different uh, way of importing and exporting a required js syntax so to make es modules work we can do that but we have to change this type into module the common js standard was the default one in node.js but all of this is changing to es modules so now it should work so now i'm going to save i'm going to run it and you can see i'm getting a very nicely structured overview of all the data on that page so we see a title description price etc now what's wrong with this approach well in the real world you're going to run into many obstacles for example the website may detect that you are a bot you're scraping data and they may block you or maybe the website that you're trying to scrape is geographically restricted and you cannot access it from your location or they change this html structure that we just looked at and all of these selectors here in our scraper they don't work anymore or the page that you're trying to scrape requires some user interaction for example maybe you need to hover something before you see the data or you need to click on some load more button or you need to scroll down to load more products or in this case for example you need to click to go to the next page or maybe the website has captchas now you know those little games that you have to solve in order to see the data or maybe the website is very heavy client-side rendered right? it's a lot of javascript rendering in that case you cannot easily interact with the html like what we've done here and of course all of this doesn't properly scale so at this point you may want to check out this scraping browser api by bright data which solves a lot of those obstacles for you especially getting blocked right so their proxy network will help you get around that issue so we'll look at how to implement bright data in a second so one thing you want to do at this point is you want to use puppeteer or selenium or playwright they help you out with some of those obstacles they make it easier to interact with the page programmatically right so if you need to click on a button to get more data you can do that a little bit easier with puppeteer so puppeteer is also something we can download with npm and with puppeteer you're essentially controlling a browser so what i'm doing here for example i'm clicking manually on this button now to go to the next page and then i can go back here to the other page and so i can click around myself using my mouse but with puppeteer you can do all of that programmatically so it makes it a bit easier to deal with those interactive issues so let's install puppeteer as well i'm going to close this file and now we're going to create let's say the medium professional solution right so first we had the simple amateur way now this is going to be a little bit better and i'm going to install npm install puppeteer 
Now Puppeteer comes with two versions, so they also have Puppeteer Core, which is what you want to use when you're using Bright Data, because with Puppeteer Core, you can use a remote browser, right? And Bright Data offers that, right? So they're scraping browser, you can hook that into Puppeteer and you can programmatically control the browser through Puppeteer with Bright Data's browser. Before I show you that, we can also download the normal Puppeteer version, which actually comes with a Chromium installation as well. So here we're going to control our own browser and that's going to have some downsides, which you will see, but this is maybe something you want to do. All right, so it's installed. Then I can import Puppeteer from the package that we just installed. And we still have the same function that we're going to run at the end of the file. So let's see, we still want to do the same things as before. So if we look at the simple scraper that we had, we first were going to this URL. So how does that look like with Puppeteer? Well, we're going to do all of this in a try catch block because something could go wrong and we want to catch any errors so we can gracefully deal with errors. In this case, we're just going to log. But also at the end, what we want to do is we want to close the browser because we're going to create a browser instance here. I will create a variable for that outside this try catch block. So then here first, we're going to sort of instantiate, we're going to open up the browser. So we can say the browser here, we can say puppeteer, we can say launch, and we're going to await that. A lot of this is going to be async await. So we're going to launch a new browser instance, essentially. We're going to store the result of that in browser so that then at the end we can close it as well and i will use optional chaining here in case this doesn't work properly so we've opened up our browser right so just like you would open up the browser on your computer right that's what we do here and then of course you you, you want to open a tab you want to actually type in the url that you want to go to and just to show you how these interactions work with puppeteer let's just go to the home page first and then with puppeteer we'll, we will navigate to that products page we're going to create a new page we're going to store that in page right so here we launch browser and open new blank page. Okay, so then we have our page open. So the viewport, typically in these examples, is people use 1080 and 768. We're going to navigate to some URL. Now, before we do that, we may also want to set the navigation timeout. So if it takes too long to load, it's just going to stop trying. So the default is 30 seconds. I've looked into Bright Data and some of the tutorials, they recommend that you increase it from 30 seconds to two minutes. Set this to set default navigation timeout I will set this to two minutes so it's in milliseconds from default 30 seconds to two minutes so that's what this looks like all right so then we have set everything up now we can actually go to the page that we want you do that with page dot go to and then the url right so this is just going to be the home page not the products page yet as you can see right just the home page i can leave off this forward slash or you can include it it doesn't matter right and what this will do is it will create it will open up the browser and it will programmatically go to this page now here we don't really want to do anything we want to go to the products page so there is a link here in the header we can inspect the HTML here. So here, all products. So there is in the header, then we have a div, then we have this UL, and then it's the second UL. In there, there is an anchor tag that we want to click. So here we can say, click on link to products page. So we can say page. Dot. And actually here we get a better suggestion from Copilot. So we can also just select by the anchor tag and then based on its href attribute. So this href attribute is indeed forward slash products. And so we don't have to drill down. We can just use this as well. At least this should work. We'll see if that actually is the case. So this will programmatically open up this, then click this, and then it will load this page right? and then we can get all the product data now sometimes it can take some time before all of this is loaded so you want to make sure that maybe something at the bottom has loaded so you're certain that everything before that has also loaded before you actually start scraping the data so here for example you may want to wait until this next page button is uh, rendered on the page so you can do that with puppeteer like this you can say wait for next page button to appear so we can say await page wait for selector so we can use a selector right so we can right click here and let's see so this is going to be an anchor tag and it actually has a class of next page so we can just use that we can say wait for the element with class next page and now when that's the case we can actually start getting the data right so here now we can be assured that all the products are on the page so just like before let's create an empty array initially product data 
data and let's see how did we do that before so here we found each product card on the page right so all of these product cards so here we're not using cheerio here in puppeteer the syntax is a bit different but logically it all works the same so here you get product elements because what we're going to use here is two dollar signs so you say page dot two dollar signs and here copilot helps me out because it can see that we're doing something similar as before so it's this selector essentially doing document query selector all so you're just selecting all elements with this selector that's going to be all the product cards here so then we can go over each of those product cards so we can say product elements dot for each and here we'll we'll make it async because we're going to await some stuff it's going to be very similar as before we already have those selectors so the title here is going to be an h2 in all of those cards so let's see if copilot helps us out yes it does so here you can see the syntax is a bit different so you take the element and then you call eval on that you say find me the h2 and then here you get the actual element what do you want to do with it well we just want to get its text content and it's going to be the same for the other ones right so here it can already see the selectors from my other file here right and it's child three and then for the price that's the following right so now we have all of the data that we want now we can push it in that array just like before now here it's a little bit tricky because here this is all working within a browser instance if you're using console log for example that may not work right because the console log is going to log to the you know the console in the browser in the browser instance perhaps so here I want to lock this within this loop. I tried doing it outside this loop, but you're going to get an empty array actually. So here I want to lock the data so that we can actually see it. So here we can say index. So when it's the last one, we can just lock that array with all the data. All right. So we're calling this function at the end. Make sure you have that in case you're following along. And now I can open up my terminal. And this time we're going to run node medium scraper. And I'm going to press enter here. And let's, and we get an issue here. Let's see. All right. Now I got an issue here because because the browser was already getting closed while we were looping over these elements. So here we're not awaiting this whole loop. Just out of simplicity here, I'm going to remove this uh, from the finally block and I will just put it manually here like this just to get rid of this issue the code is essentially still the same we're just at the end going to close the browser that's fine so now what we can do is run this script again so i'm going to say note medium scraper and this should work let's see and now again you can see we get a nicely structured overview of the data that we scraped from that website with puppeteer this time so puppeteer is going to make it a bit easier for you to navigate around the page to deal with those user interactions but a lot of those obstacles will remain right so you're going to get blocked the HTML structure may change. The website may have CAPTCHAs. It's also hard to scale this. So now we're going to look at a professional solution with the Scraping Browser API from Bright Data, which solves a lot of those obstacles for us. So now we're going to use Bright Data solution and I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to say pro scraper bright data .js. Right. So we saw the amateur way, the beginner way, and then a little bit better with Puppeteer. But now we're going to use Puppeteer as well for the professional solution in conjunction with the bright data's browser api so i'm gonna copy everything from the medium scraper that we just did i'm gonna close out of here i'm gonna paste all of that in here and you you will see that almost everything can stay the same you don't have to change much the only thing you do need to do here is of course connect to the bright data's browser because previously we were running our own browser instance on our computer now we're going to use a browser that bright data is managing and we just have to connect to that browser puppeteer allows you to do that because because they also have a Puppeteer core version. So here for a version of Puppeteer without the browser installation, they refer to Puppeteer core. So they publish two packages, Puppeteer and then Puppeteer core. And Puppeteer, when you install that one, you're gonna get a version of Chrome as well. We don't wanna run our own browser instance. We wanna run Bright Data's browser. So now we're gonna use the Puppeteer core package. So we need to install that. So we're gonna say npm install puppeteer-core and that should be pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, so now I have installed that. I'm going to close this for now. And now we need to import Puppeteer from puppeteer-core. Make sure you change this. Don't forget this. All right, so then here where we are going to start our browser, here we need to change the launch into connect because we want to connect to a remote browser. So we can say this browser endpoint. So we say browser endpoint. And here is where you need to use your authentication details. So if you've created an account on Bright Data, you can go there and you can get your credentials from here. So I have already created an account. And if you've created an account, 
you can add a proxy here. So you can click on add. And here's where we want to use the scraping browser. So here we can read about the scraping browser. It's an all-in-one browser with unlocking capabilities and proxies. So you can unlock websites at scale without being blocked. And it works with Puppeteer, Playwright, and Selenium. We can give this a special name. I will just leave the default. I'm going to add this to my dashboard. I'm going to press yes. And then it has created this for me. So down here, you're going to get your authentication credentials. Make sure you keep it a secret here. I will just copy them over into my project here. I'm going to create a new file. I will just call that auth.js and I will just create an auth constant. So you want to copy your username and let me add that here, username, and then you have colon and then your password. So I'm going to add my password after that. So and then, of course, I want to export this, export auth, export default auth. Okay, so then I have my auth there. I'm going to import it here from there. Okay, all right, so then we can use that. So then that's username and password. You need to put that here. So that's just auth. That's your username and password. And then you need to have at and then the host so the default one is this one i'm just going to copy the host and i can just paste that right here so basically what we're doing here is we're connecting to a browser instance from bright data right so we changed the pop tier to pop tier core we changed this but everything else can stay the same and i made a small typo here there should be two s's so now let's try running this file and let's see if this still works so we're going to say note pro scraper bright data dot js and let's see if this works so and you can see after a second or two i get all of this data just like before but now we have removed a lot of those obstacles we're not going to get blocked as easily we can do this at scale etc those problems are now managed by Bright Data. And you can see how easy it is to set up. It's just like you would have done anyway with Puppeteer. And Bright Data also works with Selenium and Playwright. So it's not only Puppeteer. Now, Bright Data is actually using a so-called headful browser. So it's actually using a GUI graphical user interface with this browser instance. So it really looks like a real user accessing some websites. And if you want, you can even see a visual of what's going on. So you can just take a screenshot. So here, for example, after we have have waited for this on the page maybe we just want to see what's going on so here we can take a screenshot page dot screenshot and it can put that here in our local file system right so if we do this and now i run this script again let's see if that actually works so we can see what's going on while this browser is doing all of this again all through bright data right you can see now i have a screenshot file here in my local file system and it actually shows me a screenshot of the page right how cool is that so you can also see visually what that bright data browser is doing at any point during your script. Bright Data also gives you a very nice dashboard where you can monitor your usage. So I would say check it out. They also give you some tips on reducing bandwidth while scraping. Check out their frequently asked questions. For example, you can avoid unnecessary media content downloadings. So often while scraping, you don't want to download images or videos. And often you also want to make sure that you are effectively using cached pages. So you're not unnecessarily wasting bandwidth. And so check out their documentation. They also have a scraping browser debugger which helps you easily debug any issues you may come across so i want to thank bright data for sponsoring this video check out their website they are offering these proxy services which makes it useful for all sorts of scraping that you want to do if you want to scrape heavily guarded websites like social media platforms or e-commerce platforms those are heavily guarded you really need some residential ips and bright data can give you that however if you're scraping something like a public forum or a public database you only need a basic data center proxy and Bright Data also offers that. Right, so hopefully you learned something. Hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching this video. Check out the links in the description. And then I hope to see you in the next one. All right, have a nice day. Bye.